Well, hang on. We've only done examination in chief. What about cross-examination? Because when you cross-examine, you're not asking open questions anymore. You're asking questions to, to draw attention to your case, to bend perceptions and put an idea in the jury's mind. You fancy Zara, don't you, Ed? You give the answer in your question, and that way you control the answer. You fancy Zara, don't you, Ed? Don't be afraid of silence. You use it to create tension. Or you can try it a different way. I suggest that you fancy Zara, but you would disagree with me, wouldn't you? You see, what I'm doing is I'm putting my case and by telling him he disagrees with it, I've closed him down to a yes or no answer. I've boxed him in. You fancy Zara? No. You engineered this session of research in order to have an excuse to flirt with her? No. Under the guise of advising her about a part, you gained her trust. And ultimately your motive for doing so was to seduce her for yourself. This? is bounce. I'm bouncing for confrontations. You, you get a rhythm going, you play dirty. You don't look at the witness, but straight ahead, and you bounce your case off them. You're trying to get them to go, it's a fair cop, Gov. Which I'm not going to do. Well, the great thing is, Ed, it doesn't matter whether you do or don't, because the impression is that it's a fair cop. You just can't admit to it. The other way, of course, creates an embarrassment. Uh, we call this looking for the lever. Do you find my wife attractive, Tim? Do you find my wife attractive, Tim? No. You're I... saying my wife is not attractive, is that right? No, I'm... So she is an attractive woman, my wife, you'd say, Tim? Yes. But... And yet you don't find her attractive. I mean, earlier you said she wasn't attractive, then you said she was. Which is the lie? See? It's like a trap door. You ring fence around, locking off escape routes, and then waha! You pull the lever. You drive an unanswerable rhetorical wedge between the answers. Fuck you. <laughs>